can get a little bit of help. Okay, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's uh, 9.02. And uh, the first item on the agenda is the acceptance of the minutes from both our open meeting and our executive session meeting from 9.29. Are there any questions related to those minutes? I actually have one. Those minutes should be separate minutes. The regular okay. meeting should be its own set of minutes and executive session should be its own set of minutes. Yes, uh, Melanie found that out for me and I actually sent you separate minutes about 15 minutes ago. Okay. So th th they are in fact separate now. Okay, let me get into that and see that then. Yeah, sorry about the-, the, the no, That's okay, review. learn as we go, right? Oh, uh, well, I, I, I tried. <laughs> um, so regular... are, there, are there any uh, no. substantive uh, questions related to the uh, minutes? No. No. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the, uh, both sets of minutes? So moved. So moved. Uh, any discussion? Ready to um, vote? I actually uh, have a question. Should the executive session represent more of the information that we discussed, whereas this is a real potential project um, for process and transparency for the taxpayers. I don't believe there's enough information on what was discussed in these minutes. Uh, all right, what would you like to add? Well, I think we should talk about, I mean, the discussion of the property behind the Atwood lot that Shopsy had mentioned the previous night Nobody knows what we're talking about here. There's no information. I took quick notes, three points. One, we could offer um, grants um, for first time buyers, which would be straight funding. We could find a developer to acquire the site or we could um, develop it um, jointly with the, the town could develop it jointly with the developer. I have notes if that's necessary. I just don't think there's enough information in, the, in that session, Al, for these notes, for these minutes. I just felt that we discussed that um, the discussion was the acquisition and possible acquisition of the Atwood um, parcel. Behind the town owned land. Yeah. Right, but none of that's in here. There, no uh, I just, there. I would just I'm put in a curiously. sentence. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into too much detail. Oh, I think you have to, it's executive session and people should know what we we're discussing. That's what minutes are supposed to represent. It's my come out, this come out in a year, right? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I, I'm going to actually suggest we release them. But um, all right. So you'd like us to add uh, that the committee discuss the possible acquisition of the three acre parcel abutting the old water tower site. Yes. Does that satisfy your concern? Well, it's more transparent i think al that people understand what okay, we that, that, i got no problem putting that in it's okay. it's what we did and if, so okay so we will add uh that the committee discuss the po possible acquisition of the three acre parcel abutting the site okay thank you okay no. all right any other uh edits uh, but i will do as i will forward these on to melanie and have her insert those if that's acceptable to the committee okay Okay, any other? All right, are we prepared to vote? All right, so first uh, we'll vote on the open session meetings and we have to do, uh, hang on, I'm gonna make some notes here. Okay, uh, Dennington? Aye. Aye. Jasinski? Aye. Landry? Aye. Stivers? Aye. Hamilton, aye. Now the executive session meeting with the, uh, Additional language added. Uh, Dennington? Aye. Jasinski? Aye. Landry? Aye. Stivers? Aye. Uh, Hamilton? Aye. And um, do you do we need to vote to release the executive session meet, minutes? Mark? Is that a yes? Oh. Okay. So yes. is there a motion to release the executive session meeting minutes from the so 29th? Move. So move. Second. Second. Okay. All any discussion? <clears throat> All those so, in favor? So was, uh, I'm sorry. Was that a was that a vote to approve and release? Uh, well, we we approved them. We didn't. Re uh, this is a vote to release. Okay. 
Sorry, we, I should have said approve and release. I pre thank you. Oh, we already approved, actually. Yep. So now we're voting to release. Okay. okay. So Dennington. Dennington. Aye. Jasinski. Aye. Landry. Aye. Stivers. Aye. Hamilton. Aye. All right. The next item on the agenda is a discussion related to the transfer of the old water tower site. And this is, uh, I sent you guys uh, the, um, PowerPoint. <clears throat> the, the PowerPoint that I went over with the town meeting. So I'll give you first a quick update on what I've been doing, and then um, we can have a, a, a chat. Um, I have uh, talked to the water department about what exists on that site. That site is the site of an old, of a water tower tank that came down in 1991. So it's about 30 some odd years ago. Um, there is a, I believe it's an eight inch line that goes into the site and there are some foundations, old foundations from the tower that exist on the site. I was also um, able to locate an old perk test for the site. The uh, Water Department, I think at one point, considered building something on that site. Uh, the perk was done in 1988, and um, I reviewed that perk with the health agent who did not see any obvious reasons why it wouldn't perk. But obviously, uh, if we subdivide or do anything with the land, we're going to have to do a new perk because the standards have changed somewhat. Uh, many of the standards are, in fact, actually somewhat looser. Um, uh, but they are also different. But so right now what I'm looking for are sort of go, no go, obvious reasons why we wouldn't want to proceed. And I have not run into any obvious reason why the site wouldn't uh, meet our needs. And so the question is, is do we want to attempt as the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Committee to acquire that site? Um, what we could build on that site, I, I met with the town planner. Um, we could build by right under the existing uh, town development uh, bylaws, um, we could build two single family homes. And um, those, and that, that would be done essentially with uh, minimal interaction with the planning board. If we want to build uh, higher densities, again, under the existing set of rules, then that would require a major site plan review, uh, which is a more involved process. Um, and so I, I think the big question in terms of are, are as follows in the short term. Uh, one, do we want to acquire the site, which would then give us the, the, the ability to develop the site or subdivide it or sell it off? Or do we want, or do we not want to? And if we want to acquire the site, do we want the town to give it to us or do we want to buy it from the town? I'm interested in people's thoughts on, on those. What's fronts. it appraised at? I believe it's about $230,000. Last time I checked. Does the, uh, does the town have to sell it for what it's worth or can they sell it for like $50,000? Mm -hmm. uh, the town does not, so there's uh, there are a variety of state laws, which I think Kathy and Andrew are probably enmeshed in on the uh, other transfer, the um, South Union School. Uh, we are exempt from that because it is a transfer between town entities. And I've checked with I, town council, and I think I sent you all a copy of his finding. So it could be some other number. Hey, Al? Yes. Th that's currently assessed at 428000 Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm well, surprised that, so Jay clearly thinks the Affordable House Trust is a town entity. That can own property? Well, I know it can own property, Sam, but, you know, it really is a trust. It's a separate entity. We're the trustees. Um, so it really is a separate legal entity. Um, so I'm just surprised it's considered a quote unquote town entity. Yeah. Um, 
but well, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I asked him that specific question, and he has done a number of these in other communities. But if you want me to double check, I'd be delighted. I don't want to step on. Yeah, you know, it's it's on uh, 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 any uh, landmines. I have great faith in what Jay or Jay's office says, but um, it might be worth just saying, hmm. Um, it really is considered. Uh, well, we, we can ask him for more detail. For example, the people that, I mean, we're the trustees. We control this entity. The town itself, whatever that means, has no authority on this entity. We do. Um, now, obviously, we're associated with the town. Oh, we're, we are authorized by, by bylaw. Yeah. But it's still a separate legal entity. Just like, you know, a trust is a separate legal entity, right? With a trustee. Yes. The trustee is a legal owner and controls everything, does everything. That's what we are. Um, so I, I, I don't think it would hurt just to make sure, Al, that we've asked the question the right way. And he agrees that it's close enough that it is a town entity. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll double check. So let me just make a note here. Just a question. Is the Southboro Open Land Foundation considered a town entity? I, I don't believe it is. No, no it's a 501c3, um, Marguerite. So it's a totally separate entity, just like the Southboro Historical Society, Inc., just like all the friends groups. They're all separate entities. But uh, are we a 501c3? No, we are a trust. Trust. Uh, enabled by state law. So we okay. are a trust. All right. Thanks. All right. And um, Al, uh, um, yeah. to Kathy's point, and I agree with Kathy, we are a separate entity. Um, and for that reason, the trust would have to pay for its own perk test. We can't use um, taxpayer funding to pay for that perk test. That has well, to come out of our monies, and it's been done in the past. And purchasing property, like if any any repairs that had to be done to Stockwell Lane, all of that money has to come out of our trust money. Well, so while, we while the town owns to it, for that. But Dorian, well, while the town owns it, they could perk it. Yeah. We don't own it right now. So if no, the we don't own it right now. But if we're well, going to go forward and do that, they've it. already done their own perk test. They're not doing anything with it. But we are going to do something with it. And because of that, the taxpayers, they've already given us the money through CPC funding. We already have taxpayer money. Um, I don't think it's right to double dip on the taxpayers and ask them to pay for that separately. We should be taking that out of our funds. May not be uh, right, but we could do it, I think. Yeah, well, uh, I would go with being doing the right way versus yeah. trying okay. to sleep. But what if we decide not to buy it and we've paid for the park? That's the thing. Well, that's that's not an unusual thing as a developer. Yeah, developers walk away from projects all the time that they've they spent mm -hmm. money for. So, um, Dorian, did you just say the town has done a perk test previously on this property? Yes. Um, so the town has done one on this property. So there was the 1988 perk test that um, Al just mentioned. Um, okay. so Sorry, I don't relate to so so repeating what somebody said. Uh, not a problem. Yeah, so we have two different, if we want to break it into two lots else, we have to park it in two different areas, correct? Oh, that, that, yes, that, that that's correct. Okay. Yes. But I, so we're going to get to that part of the discussion in just a moment. But I, so Sorry. It, <laughs> not, not a problem. We're, 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 we're trying to figure out what we're doing here. Um, so the. First question is, is the committee interested in continuing into trying to acquire the site? Well, Al, I can say how I think about it is, you know, if the old water, the, the old water tower parcel was to be transferred from the town to the affordable housing trust fund. So now it's really committed to use only for affordable housing, right? So Part That's of the right. thought process is, are there other municipal uses that could be made of this? And I really don't think that there there are. You know, it's a it's a densely it's a denser residential neighborhood, so the town wouldn't be putting, you know, fire equipment there or anything like that. This appears to be the the best use of the property, other than you know, there's no talk of bringing back a water tower there or anything like that. So I think it makes sense. Andrew, but staying on your point for a moment, another thing, Al, just to be sure of, um, and John Butler will know the answer to this. I should, but I don't. Um, yes, the, we with the proposed Hopkinton water connection, you know, we're going to go down to two tanks, one level, one pressure level, et cetera, and we don't need the tank on Fairview that we've been talking about for 20 years now. But 
there is going to be a piece of equipment um, put there um, to help the pressure in that neighborhood. So there is something going there um, as part of the PAR overall plan. I just don't know exactly what it is and how big it is. And I don't know if it's exactly on that piece of property, but it might be. Well, maybe the town can have some easement for it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not a tower. I don't think it's big. It's some type of maybe ancillary pumping station or something to, to basically help that neighborhood. That's part of this plan is to, you know, try to get all this sorted out with the town as far as where we've got low pressure points. And that's one of them. So there is something planned for that neighborhood with the Hawkington water connection. I just don't know the details. Okay, so what I will do is, and we can do this in parallel. I will, uh, I'll sit down with Bill and John, and um, could just confirm that that site isn't part of any plans for related to any future water or other municipal uses. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. <clears throat> So uh, here's the next question. Uh, do we buy the uh, site or do we ask the town to donate it? So I, I here's, it seems like I might have a different view of some people, but you know, this is just, I understand the trust is different than the town, but it's really, you know, one municipal use to another. And if the affordable housing trust fund buys it, that's using trust funds that could be used for some other purpose. You know, if, if the trust fund is looking to acquire private property to, to make into affordable housing, it's certainly gonna to need to pay for that. So if there's an opportunity here where if town meeting would be willing to approve it, to approve a donation, that's something I'd be interested in. I agree. I agree, Andrew. What is, what is, the, what is the downside of that? I'm, yeah, I don't want to pay four hundred twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars. That just no. money. Okay, I, I this is really it's a, it's. I want to make sure we discuss it. I mean, this is an example of the leverage we keep talking about. So yeah. the town already owns the land, so let's let's ask for it to be transferred over. Okay, so we. And what you said, Al, is that based on Jay's advice, you would have a uh, so there would be a, a warrant article. Yeah. That would Ask the town meeting to, and it would need a two thirds vote to, right. and then once it's in the affordable housing trust fund, then the, if it was much later down the road, there was a plan to develop affordable housing, and there was going to be a development partner that you wouldn't need the town meeting approval to then convey that's, it to someone else. Okay. That's my understanding as as well that we have town meeting has vested us with that authority. That's right. And I think that's. That's, uh, I, I think as, as we talk about this with the public, I think it's important to say that town meeting has vested us with this authority, that this is blessed, this is not an end round by town meeting. Town meeting told us to do this. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna ask uh, what, so for a, a vote to pursue a warrant article to donate the old water tower site on Atwood Road to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, or the Al, Affordable Housing Trust. Al, if that fails at town meeting, should we have a backup plan of something? I mean, if it fails at town meeting, then you're back to square one. Uh, no, we need two thirds. If they say no, should we have some type of a backup to where we would want to pay something? And we don't have to discuss that now, but I think we should think about that. We should have a backup plan. Anything. And I think the right verb, Al, is not donate, but it's transfer. Transfer, um, yes. So I don't want to pay anything. And I think, you know, part of the case to be made at town meeting by the trust, the trust that should get up and make a presentation, right? Right. Um, so Al, you'll be on. And you, sh I, I, you know, to the extent we can provide details as far as what we would like to see happen here, I think it would sell better rather than just say we want it to come over and we're going to try to figure out later what we're going to do with it. Even if we don't have a deal in place, at least a broad plan as far as what we'd like to see happen to it. Right. That's going to be the next item on the agenda. Okay. So, all right. So, is there a motion to draft uh, a warrant article for the transfer of the old water tower site 
from the town to the affordable housing trust. So, so before we take this one, I'm just thinking through okay. this town means yep. that there's really nothing there. So there's no maintenance or no insurance costs associated with this or are there okay yeah i mean what what's there is a couple of the neighbors have <clears throat> put in uh sort of driveways to their backyards on the site mm -hmm. and but yeah i don't think the town is spending any money on the on the land mm -hmm. you know it would actually the driveways generate... into the site mean there's two there's two there's two actually that look like roads right in the middle of it yeah, they're they're not roads. They're I'm going to call them a path I could drive my Park Subaru path. on. Yeah, I, I would encourage you to go and and look at the site um, that that go into the back of 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 a butters, and you know we may have to do some some um, negotiation with them. We're going to talk about that in just a minute as well. But um, yeah, there's Andrew to answer your question. I don't believe the town is spending any money on it. Mm -hmm. It, no prior construction or activity there that would create any hazardous materials on the site, as far as you're aware. The only thing I'm aware of is the water tower, is the old water tower, yeah. and the foundations and the the eight inch pipe that goes into the lot, which shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, hopefully it was drinking water, <laughs> <laughs> and it's very high. So yes. Well, we okay. did we should discuss this at some point with the neighbors who are using that as their driveway. Yep. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in just in just a minute. Okay. So, is there a so motion? I'll make to... I'll make a motion. So, I make a motion to um, support adding an article onto the 2024 um, annual town meeting warrant that would request the town to transfer um, this property to the Affordable House Trust, subject to Al's investigation um, of the impact on the proposed Hopkinton water connection engineering plans. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, uh, Dennington. Aye. Landry. Aye. Stivers. Aye. Jasinski. Aye. Cook. Aye. Hamilton, aye. All right. So then the next thing that comes up is really sort of two parts, which is sort of a plan of what we would like to build there. And um, my suggestion is that we begin to contact organizations that um, develop affordable housing and ask them for at least, you know, a meeting and or some sort of preliminary proposal for what they might do with the parcel. Um, and I actually think that this is a task which we might reasonably ask Shopsy to begin with. Uh, I have a lot of connections with Habitat for Humanity and I can arrange to have Habitat give us a proposal, but we ought to have, we ought to open the, and make sure we, we've um, considered other opportunity, other options uh, as we proceed. Well, as you start getting into looking at different groups, that's shop seed purview. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And they don't know. They only know about the, the lot because I had mentioned it at the meeting before you brought it into right. executive session. And I have not been able to discuss anything else with them because everything was under executive session. Right. But my plan was to um, talk about it and start scheduling um groups different groups to coming starting in january and okay. give presentations to see what options would be to build on that lot okay so that's that's shopsies that's what we're supposed to be doing that's not the job of the affordable housing trust fund you're the funding mechanism for that type of a project we are supposed to be the ones you know putting it together and coming to you for funding so Dor we're, we're crossing a little bit of, we're crossing lines here a little bit so mm -hmm. i'm going to speak up on behalf of shopsy this is what we're supposed to do. So you guys need to hand it. If you've decided that's where you want to go, you need to hand this over to Shopsy and let us run with it. You can't be micromanaging this or doing this yourselves and then telling us you're going to do this. That's that's not the way this is supposed to work. I don't so, totally agree. I don't really care as long as we get it done. 
Exactly. Uh, we and we want to get it done, Kathy. That's where we've done all this other work. We've had to get a housing production plan. We had to get the strategic strategic plan. We looked at the South Union School. We've done all of this stuff, but we've taken every step legally we needed to do to get here. We found that piece of land on Atwood. We brought it up in a meeting and then it went into executive session. It's kind of halted us from being able to do anything, but we need to work together on this. This is something we should be working together on to make it a reality. And it's got to be transparent and it's got to be all above board. And, you know, Agreed. I would and, like to start going forward with my group and start working on this as a project. I think, Dorian, when it goes, to, there's two things that concern me about it that I know Shopsy can help with. One is that you've got connections with groups that could possibly build on it, outside groups that you could use. And the other thing is, I'm very leery of the neighborhood packing the town meeting against a two thirds vote. So I think, do you think Shopsy or the affordable housing us should be working to with the neighborhood to say this will be harmonious with your neighborhood because i think that's really important we've seen they can get really mad and i think they could blow a two-thirds vote out of the water i agree with you i think um that part of what i think we need to begin doing is a um is to hold some sort of a public forum particularly with respect to the warrant article mm -hmm. um and uh, I think that needs to happen sooner rather than later. I can tell you that, you know, I, I did approach uh, the, the the folks at 40 um, Atwood who own the three acre parcel. Uh, I've had several conversations with them. Um, I don't think they're particularly enthused. Uh, and I don't think they're terribly I've, I've got a little more work to do. But um, I don't think they're particularly, I, I don't get the feeling that selling the three acre parcel right now is something that's high on their priorities. No, and whatever we do, I, have the, I am of the mindset that it has to fit within the neighborhood. It cannot, it has to be something that the neighbors won't mind. It has to fit in the look of the neighborhood. We don't want to do anything that's going to hurt their property values. So right. we have to be very cognizant yep. that these people have lived there and we're bringing in hopefully, you know, really nice families, two different houses, families that will work with them and it's cohesive. We can't just go slamming something in there and ruin the neighborhood. I Absolutely. would never, ever support something like that. Absolutely. So I don't think that's the plan. And we're not talking about a 40 B here. We're talking about one or two houses. Um, so this should not create the firestorm that other projects. So to that to that point, Al. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I appreciate that in the PowerPoint you just circulated. You know, there's a couple different options, right? Yeah. Uh, right off the bat, I can say that option four, the super lot partial MBTA fulfillment, that's something that I think, you know, would probably get a pretty critical reception uh, right yeah, that. That, that was that was there for the sake of ideas but I, yeah. I i agree with you you know i think in fact right now the only thing that we are asking for is the water tower lot and the only thing we can build without um planning build by right is two single family homes mm -hmm. now, so then it, it might be helpful before any, you know, next meetings where I mean, you're making a good point that even for the town meeting warrant article for the transfer of lot uh, one, yeah, you know, there's going to be questions, well, what do you want to do with it? I hear that you have plans also for the three acre parcel before and that, you know, if we are clear that no, we're not looking to pursue option four, that at least I think should give some comfort because option four gets into yes yeah I, I might even remove app option four from the current oh but, yeah um hey al um, yes we have some meeting attendees who haven't seen the um powerpoint thing do you do, oh, okay would it be useful to share screen and just go through that and show mm -hmm. folks what uh, the options look like just in sure time. um if uh is there somebody who can help me share a screen the stur the sturgeons are on. Whoever the host is, I can host do it. Is, I can do it if you who's, want. Who's the host? 
Uh, Marcus. That, yeah, that's me. Hang on. Yeah. If oh, you make okay. me co-host, I can try to figure out how to do it. Al, I know how to do it. Point too. just has the maps. Yes. I don't have any other information attached to that. Um, Andrew just mentioned some points. I don't have any of that information. No, they're they're they're, they're, they're just maps. Your co-host now, Andrew. Okay. I would be very yeah. interested to hear what the Sturgeons have to say. I'm going to put up this uh, PowerPoint in one second here, if I can uh, figure yeah. out how right. to do it. Okay, Al, okay. just a quick question: what What was um, Andrew referring to? The different options. I don't have that information. Uh, it's there. I'm going to show it to you right now. You're in the PowerPoint, can... we're in. Yeah. But yeah, they're not. I only have the maps. That's why I'm asking Sam. I only have the maps on my PowerPoint. That's all there is. Labeled. All right, here we go. Let's see if this works. Option one, option two, option okay. three, option four. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. I thought that we might. You want me to scroll through them really quickly? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so the first thing I think we ought to say is these are ideas and they're mostly my ideas. There's nothing cast in concrete. There's nothing that's even cast in mud. Uh, so, you know, these are just ideas. But they're all their ideas that you talked about with the town planner, right? So, yeah, I did talk about okay. the town planner. So, they're actually like feasible things. Okay. Uh, oh. Yes, I think these are all potentially feasible. All right. So, I'll just. The last one I think is not, but uh, that's first, another matter. This one just shows the locus. You know, when I was referring to parcel one, that's what I refer. These aren't like official titles one, two, three. You just named yeah. them that. Here's the option one. You just you just develop the water tower site into two affordable units because, right. as Al was saying, maybe you just need an A and R for that. That's it. This this is the both lot three and I'm sorry, lot two and lot one are developed and then subdivided accordingly. And then this is this one. That's that one. This is what I was talking about. Yeah. So yes, I would get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, this was just an idea. And just, just to back up, if you go down to the bottom, yeah. these are examples of affordable houses. That you know, the the one on the uh the left is sort of the, the standard habitat affordable house. The one on the right is uh in Northborough, it's actually a duplex. Um, it was a, a renovation of an existing house. What's the price point on that for Southboro? Um, I believe that the families can have incomes up to about a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that the if, you, if we're now talking about the sale of a property, yeah. uh, there's sort of there's a thirty six percent target where thirty six percent of the household income is devoted to uh, principal interest, insurance, and taxes. So and 30,000 uh, And yeah, it's- 36, you know, that, that's your normal mortgage computation that all yeah. banks do, so. Okay, and, then, and so that if, yeah. the, if someone buys the house, how much would it cost them roughly? If they had an income of about $100,000 under the existing interest rate environment, mm -hmm. they would be paying about $300,000. Now the and house- if, well, yeah. Where do you get that number, Al? I thought you could sell it to to them for whatever you want to. So where do you get three hundred? Well, I just I work backwards from the thirty six percent and a hundred thousand dollars to a monthly payment, and then oh, uh, <clears throat> what what sort of borrowing that would support? Okay, again, but you these... could you could sell it for less if you wanted to. Yep. Yes, you could. Yeah. Yes. And my question is, if someone <laughs> buys it for say two hundred and fifty thousand. And it's someone who works in town. It's a teacher or whatever. Um, when they sell it, are they limited in what they can charge for it? Um, it gets a little convoluted. And this is a piece I do not understand very well. Mm -hmm. But the house remains permanently as an affordable unit. Mm -hmm. And so it, you can't buy the house for $250,000 and you know three years from now sell it okay. at the market rate yeah. it has to still be sold under the affordable housing rules i believe that it i believe that 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 the affordable housing trust fund would have the right of first refusal yes to buy that's the house right. back okay and then we would resell it okay so, we're gonna have other, to other, 
Yeah, go ahead. The, the other thing you have to take into consideration is this is affordability that everyone would have to go through the DHCD. And now what is that, Dorian, the DHCD? That's that's, that's the, the state um, controller of it's the department that controls the affordable housing for the state. That's the mm -hmm. one that gives us our percentage. We're supposed to be up to 10 percent. We're at 8.6 mm -hmm. right now. Right. They control the lotteries for affordable housing. This would have to go through a lottery and they would have yes. to qualify through the DHCD. We don't mandate or control that. That's regulated by the state. Well, here's yes. my other question. If how, how are, say this would be for someone who teaches in the town or a firefighter, how do they enter a lottery and how do we know we're gonna get somebody from Southboro? That no. doesn't, we can't control who gets to live in there. We can't control us from Southboro. It has to go through the state. It goes through the DHCD. Um, and so it could be for process. it could be for anybody. It could be for somebody who lives in Marlboro or Framingham or Newton. Yes, right? that's correct. Yeah, we can't control who gets to live there. That's that we don't get to do that. If we're going to get credit from the DHCD to add to our percentage, they control that. They it goes well, to the lottery. Devil's it advocating. The lottery why are we? The state why are, qualifies yeah, them. Yeah. Marguerite, let me finish what I'm saying, please. Yep. State mandates, they control it, they choose the person, the person buys it. It goes through a mortgage company that doesn't come back to us, but we but in the deed, it's we have the right of first refusal to buy the property back. And then we would buy it back. We would probably like Stockwell, we would have to reassess it, clean it up, repaint it, do whatever before we resold it. If it needed work, we'd have to take care of that out of the affordable housing trust funds and then resell it. Understood. Yeah. Okay, so my question is, if I'm sitting in town meeting, why are we taking a nice piece of open space and building two houses there for people who may not even live in this town? You can't control affordable housing and who's going to live there, Marguerite. It doesn't matter. I mean, you people can't. sell their you houses can't. every I'm just, day. I'm just saying people will say that. Why should we even do this? I'm just answer if you can answer the question. I, I, mean, I, I think I can answer. Because we want to promote affordable housing, period. Yeah. The, the answer is that we can't control who lives in the town in any parcel. Nope. Um, in fact, you know, we get in big trouble if we try to do that. All right. uh, the, uh, beyond that, you know, we have stated in many different forums that we want to have affordability and economic diversity. So this is a chance for us to essentially, you know, put our money where our mouth is. And, you know, uh, yes, you know, yep. part of part of the affordable housing program is to give opportunities to families who might not be able to live in a nice suburban community with good schools and that uh th there is a real social benefit to that and that is you know so this is a question about you know what our community values really are and it, what what we can, can really truly say about ourselves actions speak louder than words Okay, but what I keep hearing is that way our teachers and our policemen and our firefighters will be able to live in our town. But what I what you just said shows me that that's probably not going to be the case. That's not the case, Marguerite. Think about it. Um, a lot of our teachers and firemen already don't don't live here because they can't. So you're giving those guys a chance to to get into the lottery here. But stay on the big picture for a moment. It's good. All right. for um, first of all, DHCD doesn't exist anymore. It's EOHLC. That's the new entity that's taken over. So mm -hmm. it's EOHLC. Now, why? Okay, so Al, let me ask you this. Why do we have to comply with any of this? Why can't we go to, for example, um, our um, much loved Habitat and say, work with us, let's build a house. And we set the rules as far as how we sell that house. What makes us comply? So I, I, I can tell you what the Habitat model is. And it's a little different. In in the habitat model, you we you typically give habitat the land, and you typically give them some money, yep. and they build a house. And then finding uh, the occupants is no longer our problem; it's habitat's problem. Habitat is responsible for the long term maintenance of the facility, for filing all of the deed restrictions, for selecting the families. If the house um, needs repair in, in transition, Habitat provides that. They actually sometimes will provide uh, repair services even for families who occupy a unit. We, I've, I've done that on a, on a number of occasions. So th that is a case where we are, in effect, outsourcing the entire uh, 
affordability process as opposed to managing it ourselves like we might like we do in in some of the pro other properties so that is a model it's not the only model but it is a model where you know we don't we can't we cannot specify who gets a particular house and in fact you know we get no we're violating probably dozens of state and federal laws if we try to go down that road road okay but you could do the habitat model which is absolutely is, all i'm just repeating what you said which is literally outsource it um to them they take it from there they do their deed restrictions like their program says they have to do and we have no control over it from that point on it's all in habitat's control as far as what happens to it from right. here on out i mean the reality is we have little control anyway in terms of who gets to live there um and so the question is whether we want to take on sort of the ongoing obligations of finding qualified families and and um transitional maintenance on the facility or whether we want to outsource that so the only reason i'm bringing this up um is to point out that you know the 40b rules yeah okay that's great i know what they're trying to do but i've always thought it was a little bs as far as you know, calling that really affordable just because they lower the threshold slightly um, as far as the rent you have to pay um, or what you have to pay to buy those. Um, to me, you know, it's if it's already high, 80% of high is still high. Um, so that's why I'm hoping with this, we can really end up with, you know, one, two, whatever units that are truly units that will bring people to Southboro or already live here that will allow them to stay in Southboro with something that's truly affordable. Which is yeah. where I think we're heading. So all I'm doing is preaching to the choir here. I know. Well, Al, um, yes. just want to let you know. So Kathy and I have a, a meeting scheduled with Brian Ballantyne coming up at ten, which is to start to lay the groundwork for the joint advisory select board meeting coming up. You know, next week. So yeah, um, sounds like you know we already are all in agreement that we want to pursue this uh, Warren article to transfer it to the affordable housing trust fund. I think there's. We just maybe the next meeting, we just keep working through those details. And I completely agree that, you know, maybe doing it in conjunction with um, some type of a forum or a neighborhood meeting where, you know, we just lay up. These are some of the different options we've signed. It sounds like don't even talk about that, you know, MBTA super lot. Um, it's not something we're interested in. It, it would be homes that are more, you know, just like the um, pictures you showed on the last slide. And, um, you know, nothing is going to get 100% support, but uh, <laughs> it just won't. But um, I, I'm, I'm interested in moving forward and, and thank you for, and, and Dorian for, you know, uh, putting together the work to get to this point so far. Um, could I, I just, this may be out of order, but I would, the two of the, um, Jan Sturgeon and Josh Sturgeon are both in the audience. They're they're the abutters. I'd really like to hear from them at this point. Have they raised their hand? Um, not yet. So I'm not sure we should, unless they want to come over. Right, unless, yeah, um, if they want to speak, we, we'd certainly be more okay. than... All right. If they raise their hands, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I, I think... The, the next step is, and I would encourage uh, Shopsy, now I'm a member of Shopsy, to uh, move as expeditiously as possible to identify potential development partners and to bring those development partners in for discussions. I think uh, I think we should we should target starting this month. I mean, I can I can probably get somebody from Habitat in this month if. Uh, if if that that's uh, appropriate, um, if there's no other business, I think we're probably done for the day. Is, does that sound right to everybody? Could I just quickly ask a question? Sure. If, if this if a standard developer and this is hypothetical um, were to develop housing on that place, it would not be worth their while to build affordable houses. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Yeah. A, they're going to have to spend. A standard developer is going to spend two hundred thousand dollars per lot, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then they are A and R lots, so they could, in fact, 
fact, um, build without extensive planning board reviews, but they're still going to have to follow all of the rules and they're going to want to make a profit. Okay, so so it would it a, a standard I, I, developer is, is off the table then, basically. not without yeah, some when help. You, when not when you spend, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Bigger house they build, the more money they make. So yes, I uh, looking at my street now. I know that is definitely true. They're uh, they're way up there. Okay, so that's kind of off the table. All right, right. I mean, that's why we tried so hard to get five quarterable because it didn't really make sense to me for a developer to come in and do what he was going to do. So I don't know what he's going to end up with there, but that's why that one was so interesting because of where it was um, yeah. and what you thought um, could be done by us and not necessarily by a developer. So and I loved the I style of that. That house is a wonderful house. It's really a beautiful thing. Anyway, never mind. Irrelevant. Okay, thank you, Al, for all your work on this. It's huge. Okay, is there thank you, a... Dorian, for all the work you're going to do, right? Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> we'll move. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, Dennington? Aye. Chesinski? Aye. Stivers? Aye. Cook? Aye. Landry? Aye. Hamilton? Aye. Thank you very much. Oops. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.